Hey, everybody, welcome back to another episode of Cashflow Positive. I'm your host, Kenny Bedwell. And today we are going to talk about one of my favorite topics, and that is the biggest trap to short term rental hosts. Okay. Now, the biggest trap to short term rental hosts isn't necessarily your competition or outside variables. It actually has a lot to do with what you personally have control over, believe it or not. And so, What my goal is on today's podcast episode is to break down how you can change that and honestly get ahead of your competition and crush your goals and your numbers by doing one simple thing. And that's what we're going to talk about. So let's dive into it. So, all right, let's go and spoil it. What's the biggest trap? So the biggest trap that I see short-term mental hosts make is that they don't track future earnings and pacing. Okay. Meaning like they don't understand what their key KPI metrics are, or essentially the, the heartbeat or pulse of their actual property going forward in the future. Meaning they're so caught up in what's happening today or what happened in the last month. And they're not worried about the future. So what I mean by that is we typically experience this like feeling of relief and um, success during the summertime because summertime in most markets is the high season. So everyone's like, wow, I'm making lots of money. I've got nothing to worry about. Everyone loves my place. There's high demand. I'm doing well. And that's great. But what ends up happening is we take our foot off the gas and we're not thinking about those fall bookings. We're not thinking about those Shoulder season bookings, meaning, you know, the season in between the off season and the high season, which is typically the fall or even the spring. And the problem is that's where you make your money. That's where you cash flow positive. Everybody can make money during the summertime. Okay. Everybody can get bookings and they can do extremely well, but it's during the off season or the shoulder season when you truly make your returns and you become the best in your particular market. But you can only do that if you know how your property is pacing, if you know how your property is currently doing, okay? Um, I, I've had, the reason I want to do this topic is because, because I, I know it's a little bit obvious, but people don't act, they, they act very reactionary to bookings, right? So when things do extremely well, they're like, great. And they're not paying attention to, hey, what can I do to improve in the off season year over year? How can I try to attract people for when people are, there's not a lot of demand. People are coming to my actual market. So what I want to talk about in this episode today is how to actually do that, what you should be doing and how you can prepare for the children off season. Because folks, now is the time. Seize the moment. Now is the opportunity. It's headed in school starting in in the Southeast. In the Northeast, it's going to start in about a month from now when I'm recording this episode. And so the reality is like, that's when the off or the shoulder season starts in most markets. Okay. Or it's, it's beginning in some markets. And if you're not prepping your pricing, if you're not prepping your listing for that slower season, you're going to be left behind. And I'm seeing a lot of people getting left behind because they're, they're, they're riding the highs. Another thing too, I, (laughs) there is seasonality in every market, right? And uh, I, I had a client like she she was like, super excited that her property's doing well, which is great. Obviously, I'm, that, that's the point of why people hire me. And uh, you know, and she's like, "Hey, I'm making so much money. We're gonna like I I think we're gonna like almost two x what you originally projected." And I'm like, "I don't think so. Like, I'm not trying to be negative or you know like a down or anything. I'm just like two x. Like, you, you gotta like you're you're riding the summertime wave." I was like, don't, I told her literally, I said, don't stone me in the wintertime when booking slow down and ADR drops and occupancy drops. Like, please don't, don't go get mad at me. Like, so I was like, we're still going to hit that target we talked about. Uh, But the reality is that summertime is definitely a high and we can't just live off that high in the shoulder season and then start to suffer. Oh crap. What are we doing? Panic. All right. So Let's dive into what should we be doing today to understand our pulse of our current short-term rentals. And, or maybe you're looking at a short-term rental to purchase and you're like, okay, well, how's this property going to do? Or or based on, um, it's maybe, maybe you have the data for that particular property. It's already been a short-term rental and you want to see how it's currently doing and pacing in this particular market. And then we'll talk about what you can do to be proactive instead of reactionary in the future. So I want to show you a feature in SDR Insights. Now, this feature, I believe, is, I mean, it's in most data pools. So 
I'm not going to sit here and say, hey, you need to go to S tier insights and use this all the time. But I mean, this is just something we need to be looking at. All right. So I uh, I took a lake market. This is Hot Springs, Arkansas. So if you're listening to this, I'm going to explain it. If you're watching a video, great. You're going to see it visually because that's how I roll sometimes. I like showing stuff. It's, it's fun. Um, but I understand this is a podcast and people are listening. So let, let's go through it. So I'm showing right now a line chart of Hot Springs, Arkansas revenue. Right. So like you'd expect it's a lake market in the middle of Arkansas or kind of middle of Arkansas. And there's a national park there. There's a casino and there's a really cool lake. So obviously it's going to be heavy, heavy, heavy market or a summer market. Here's the really interesting thing. Now, I know I'm looking at the average. OK, so don't like kill me, you know, for not doing a particular bedroom count. But we're going to stick to the average right now. And if you look at the occupancy. So this goes back to like January 2023. If you look at the occupancy for the year, it's like relatively between like stays between like for the average of the market between 60 and 80 percent. OK, like literally like the peak is like 78 and like the bottom is like 50, like 60 percent down on. So really not that much fluctuation. That's typically what you would see in like a, a usual three season market. However, the revenue data paints the true tale. So what happens during the off season, the shoulder season naturally is people drop their prices because demand is lower. Therefore, when people drop their prices to a rate that people or demand is willing to actually purchase, the, you know, we see occupancy will pick up. That's why it's relatively flat, not, not hundred percent flat. It's, you know, there's some variance there, but it's really not that much lower than we'd expect, but it's the revenue that is really painting the true tale where you can see the high revenue average for the month is $5,400 and the low is $2,100, which is like over 100% less, right? So that, that's a very high and low, meaning there's like a very high season and a very low season in this particular market, which is common in most markets. People are in like beach markets, lake markets, anytime high summer, low, where I'm at, it's probably more extreme than I probably should just in my market. So the reality is like people make their money in the summertime. And that's what you should expect. And then the off season, it starts to go down, like really drop. And then off season, you don't make any. Okay. So what's the lesson to be learned here? So number one, you need to understand if, if I have, let's, let's, let's do an example. Let's say I had a three bedroom in Hot Springs, Arkansas. So I can flip this to three bedrooms and I can see what the revenue was based on revenue percentiles in Hot Springs to see how I did relative to the market to know what percentile I fall in. So for example, if I'm looking at this and it's, you know, in March, it's at $5,100, which is spring break time. So that's why it does well. April 38, 3,500 in May, June 47, July date is coming soon. So we'll have that. But anyway, so like if I'm making these or pacing on that, I know I'm in the 75th percentile and this is how I'm doing and this is how I'm pacing. Okay. I can go back and look at history. Okay. To know what the trend will be going in the future. So I know July, I should be making more money than June. And then in August, it's going to take a dip. So we're in August right now. Okay. So I know I'm not going to make as much money. If I have a three bedroom property in Hot Springs, I know I probably won't make as much money in August as I did in July. Okay. So that, that, that's normal. Now the target amount should be, we can use historics to get a, get a rough idea, especially if we're pacing at a certain percentile, which in this case, just the average or 75th. Okay. Well, I guess that isn't the true average, but we're in, the, in this example, it is the average. So 75th percentile. And I know that I should be making about $4,700 this month, that that's where my target is, my target percentile. So I shouldn't panic if I make less money in August than I would in July. And it's the same sentiment. I shouldn't be like overly excited and to the moon if I'm making more money than in July than I did in June, because that's a hundred percent normal. That's what I like. I know this is like a duh kind of thing, but people aren't like watching this stuff. They're not tracking what they actually did in the month. They're really, ref everything is reflecting based off, did I have money in the bank account versus like, I have no money in the bank account and I had to pay out of pocket, right? That's when people start to panic and go, what's wrong? What am I doing wrong? But the reality is we should understand how we're doing and how we're projecting. It's really, really simple. People don't really know. I ask all the time, like when someone's like, well, I'm struggling to get bookings. Why are you struggling? Or like, what do you, are you actually tracking what you're pacing, what you should be doing? If you think you, you're you going to make $200,000, okay, what percentile does that fall under? And are you tracking? Or are you on pace to hit that? Because 
there's going to be highs and there's going to be lows. In your high season, you're going to make the majority of your revenue. Okay, duh. In your low season, you're going to make the, the least amount of revenue. Okay, duh, right? But how much? And that's why you have to go to the data. That's why you have to study the data out based on your bedroom count, based on your percentile, what your track, what you think you should be doing to see and compare that to your property. I love to do that every single month for each one of my properties to make sure I'm on pace. And guess what? I rarely drop a fifth or, you know, 5% in the, you know, out of the competition each month because I am tracking it. I'm making sure that I am staying ahead. Now, some, some properties like my, my white property, I'm at the top. I, I I'm top dog. I'm 95th percentile or I'm actually like the top dog, hundredth, whatever you want to call me. Okay. And I know that. And I expect to be there forever. Right. And I'm going to stay on top and make sure and keep my metrics there. And if I start slipping like, oh, wow, like another property beat me out. Why is that? Okay. Is it because of my pricing? Is it because of my amenities or is it because of my listing? And I really dive in in the moment. I don't wait two or three months down the road and try to figure it out when I'm losing money. I am tracking it every single month and seeing what the market's doing and how my and comparing that to what my property did. Okay. Now, a lot of properties saw dips year over year. So I understand like using like, sorry, I'm going to say a lot of properties. I meant a lot of markets. Okay. If I go pull up beach markets right now, I can show you all these beach markets, all these like popular mountain markets everywhere. They saw a lot of dips overall, like about a 10 to 15% dip. And I'm assuming the majority of people listening to this probably saw a little bit of the dip as well. Unless you're brand new, then you should be actually increasing, right? But if you're staying on top of it, you can take action right away and you know when to panic and when not to panic. Okay, so we're talking about this whole thing about not like being, I, I, I don't want to say it's being lazy. It's just like not being proactive, right? And when you're proactive, you actually make more money and you maximize your returns. Don't be reactionary. Okay, so let's let's step back and let's talk about what you can do in the future. Because once you understand the true seasonality, the true highs and lows in your market and the true season out, like when you'll make money, when you won't make money or it's tougher, you can then take action. How do you take action? There's a couple of things I like to do when I take action. So number one, the biggest and easiest one and obvious one is pricing, right? And I've talked a lot about this before, and it's not just about, oh, drop your prices in a low season, okay? It's more so about pulling different levers that affect pricing, affect how you look in the Airbnb algorithm. Remember we talked about, this is another episode, so if you haven't listened to it, go back. I forgot the name of it. But go back and listen to it. It's all about pricing, okay? I think it's literally called like, is it my pricing, listing, or amenities, pricing edition? So that one. That's it. So go back and listen to that one. But one of the things that's really important with pricing is leveraging cancellation policies and minimum night stays, right? We, I mean, I, I'm not a big proponent of like doing the one night minimum night stay. I know it's a little strategy that some people talk about and, you know, I can come on and talk about that strategy. It works a lot in the off season, but I'm not talking about every single night's a one night stay because we don't want to do that. We don't want to entice parties. We don't want to ruin a weekend by just having a Saturday night. That would be awful. So the minimum night stay, I see a lot of people have a three night minimum night stay. That's pretty common. Okay. In the off season, drop it to two during the week and leave it at three in the weekend. Or if it's really dead and not a lot of people are coming, then drop it to two, even during their weekends, collect the revenue one dollar. I'm not saying it's literally one dollar, but this is my example. Okay, maybe I'll say like five hundred dollars or a thousand dollars. Five hundred dollars is better than zero dollars. Okay, if you have a very small property like an apartment, one hundred fifty dollars is better than zero dollars. Okay. Now I understand the threats of parties and so on and so forth, and the quality of guests declines, but the reality is the minimum night stay is a lever you can pull, and I guarantee during your winter time, a lot of you have minimum night stays that are too long in markets where it's the winter time is the dead season. Now, I probably shouldn't say winter. I should say just the off season. So when it's the off season, check your cancellation policies. Policies may be a little more flexible. And also uh, the minimum night stay. Do not change your pricing on your cleaning fee. Okay, that's a trap. That's why Airbnb wants you to drop the cleaning fee. Okay, but it's, it's not worth it. Don't do that. All right, so you can do that first. Then... You can look at changing your pricing. 
if I'm looking towards the off season right now, I just did this yesterday. I looked at my property. I said, okay, shoulder season's coming up in October, September, October. I'm looking at my competition. They're starting to get booked up. Okay. People are booking in that time. I need to adjust my pricing. So I look at my competition. I look at where I'm at. I'm seeing what they're getting booked at. And I start adjusting closer and closer to them. As demand drops, I care less and less about, you know, how much more money can I make? And I'm looking directly at my competitors. I'm like, what are they charging? And what are they getting booked at? Because that's a real reflection of demand. Demand is willing to pay this particular price. Now, I'm not saying price is zero. I'm not saying go be a dollar less than them. What I'm saying is if you know where you rank in terms of your quality, the amenities you offer, the location, the design and decor, if you know where you rank, you can be slightly better than them to attract people who would normally take them at because of a lower price point, but willing to sacrifice a little more money to give to you because your price is better, right? Now, it, most of us aren't quote unquote number one in the market, right? So like in my Buffalo properties, I'm not number one, all right? And I know that there's some nicer ones than me and I'll, I'll never be able to beat them. But I'm aggressive, meaning I'm gonna be lower than them in price and higher than the other people, but I'm, I'm gonna be attractive. I wanna make my property and pricing look very attractive to them. So it's not just about dropping the price or being the cheapest option. It's about being the most attractively priced property based on what you offer in the shoulder and off season. That's a really, really important thing. And maybe I'll go back and do a, an episode if people want. Just let me know. Do an episode on what how I price and my strategies during the uh, shoulder and off season, particularly with competition and, and diving through all that. So I can do that episode too. But okay, so we talked about pricing. In the shoulder and off season, this is a big one. Are you changing your photos and leveraging amenities that might be more attractive during the shoulder and off season? For example, hot tubs. Okay, it is hotter than Hades right now. All right, in in almost everywhere, it's it's August, so it's hot. Right, no one's jumping in a hot tub right now, but you probably already have bookings for this month, or hopefully you do. Right, so my shoulder and off season. If I'm thinking about September, October, it's cooling down. Okay, people are thinking, oh, wow, hot tubs start to be more attractive. Guess where that hot tub photo moves? A little bit higher up, right? In the photo order. So using and leveraging amenities. If you have a pool property, okay, and you're like showing your pool off in your first five photos, you got a bunch of shots, of different pool shots. Who cares about that during the wintertime? If you're trying to get wintertime bookings and you have pool shots, unless it's like a heated indoor pool, is that really going to make sense? Is that really going to attract guests for the wintertime? Probably not. So leverage your amenities in your photos for the seasons. And if you know your booking lead time, which I talk about all the time, know your booking lead time, when people are booking, how far in advance, in beach markets, in de December, January, people are booking for the summertime. That's when the pool shots need to come back out, right? In the proximity of the beach and the sunshine and everything, people feeling good, right? But right now, in beach markets, mountain markets, wherever, they're thinking about wintertime, off season. So, how can we make our place more attractive? Adjust our photos, maybe our title description, maybe put the holiday shots in. Okay, these are different ideas to help you be proactive instead of reactionary. Oh, I didn't get Christmas book this year. Or, oh, I didn't get it the rate I normally get. Okay, well, what were you doing to promote your place for Christmas time or for Thanksgiving? Okay, this is a great opportunity to show off the kitchen, right? And the pots and pans and like the turkey dinner in or something like that. Like, be creative, guys. Like like I said, think about these future months that you've struggled to get booked in the past with or that you think are going to be difficult or that just have no bookings whatsoever and be proactive. Think about things other than just dropping your price to attract people. You have time now. Take advantage of that time. Do those things. And that's how you avoid the biggest trap for short-term rental hosting. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode on the next episode. I have brought on a professional host, co-host. He's got over 30 properties and he's going to tell us about what he does to handle seasonality in one of the most seasonal areas of the entire country in the Northeast on the beach in the Northeast, right? That's very seasonal. How he handles that and his strategies to maximize revenue during the off and shoulder seasons. And so I hope you stick around and listen to that episode because it will be super helpful regardless of where your properties are at, because he is going to tell you his secrets on how he beats seasonality. So we will see you on the next episode of Cashflow Positive.